Um, good evening, my dear friends, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Sanjay, Gitanjali, and Rashmi, uh, for having me over to address this fine group of uh, uh, people with uh, a common interest being wildlife, uh, wildlife first for conservation. In fact, I was telling Sanjay yesterday evening that uh, my journey will be more from the photographer point of view. I'm not a conservationist and I've not done much work there. But then he said, anybody who does not harm wildlife is a wildlife conservationist. And anybody who appreciates wildlife is a wildlife conservationist. So uh, with that in mind, uh, uh, let me take you, it's more like a travel log. Uh, let me take you to this uh, wonderful uh, uh, country called uh, Ecuador, uh, South, South America. I've had the pleasure of uh, visiting there twice, uh, spending almost two to three weeks both the times. And um, it was really, really, really an amazing uh, experience. In the next uh, maybe 35, 40 minutes, um, I will show you some of the photographs. It's more about, uh, today's talk is more about photography. It's more about identifying the birds. It's more about seeing and appreciating the fantastic creation of mother nature. Uh, in, in that part of the world. Um, and um, uh, as we had discussed in our trial round, uh, I would request anyone uh, who has questions to put it in the chat box. And at the end of the talk, I think uh, Sanjay or Gitanjali will, will take up and it will be a, a, with, uh, with, with great humility, I would try to address those questions. And uh, if I'm not able to do it, I'll probably come back to you at some other time but all of us are here for learning and to share my experiences. <clears throat> Why have I termed uh, this core talk as exotic? Uh, you will see that mother nature has really, really created this country in a very exotic fashion, whether it is uh, flora or whether it is fauna or whether it is birds, it's really a fantastic country to visit uh, and experience uh, the, the, the nature's beauty. Few points about, about the country itself. Uh, Ecuador is a country in the Northwest uh, South America. Ecuador includes Galapagos Islands in the Pacific, uh, which is about a thousand kilometers away west of the mainland. The capital and the largest city of Ecuador is Quito. So when you fly, you fly either via US or via, via Europe uh, directly into Quito. And uh, uh, Ecuador itself is, is one of the 17 mega diverse countries in the world. It was the first country in the world to legally recognize and enforce the right to nature or ecosystem rights in recognition of its unique ecological heritage. And this is something that, uh, that all of us in this group must be aware of and uh, be proud of. Uh, with over 1,600 species of birds, 1,600 species of birds in one country, which is much, much, much smaller than Karnataka. Whereas in India, we have 1,200 species. With 1,600 species of birds, Ecuador boasts of more than more biodiversity in less space than any other country in the world. So this is where, this is the map of uh, South America. This is where uh, Ecuador is, a small country uh, in the Northwest uh, portion. And this is the Galapagos Islands, which is about, about thousand kilometers from the mainland Ecuador. When you go to Ecuador itself, um, uh, looking at the biodiversity, uh, Ecuador has been has been marked uh, because of the high um, the its levels from the uh, from the from the sea. So that is what that is what supports the rainforest. See, this is the rainforest area. This is this is this is the area of our interest. You know, where there is rainforest, where there is deciduous forest, where there are dry forests, then mountain forests, etc. Few other interesting points about Ecuador. Ecuador is the closest country to the space because of its bulge at the equator. Mount Simbarazo 
is about 1.5 miles higher than Mount Everest because of the height itself. The only country in the world which is named after a geographic feature because the equator passes through the country, through equator, uh, through Ecuador. I will show you the place where they are marked to say that this is where the equator passes. Ecuador has world's first two UNESCO World Heritage Sites, Galapagos as number one and the city of Quito as number two. When we, when we, when we visit Galapagos Islands, they are, you know, what is it that interests Galapagos? Charles Darwin in his theory of evolution, Galapagos is the place where he conducted all his experiments to formulate the theory of evolution, the origin of species. He is linked to his time spent in the Galapagos Islands that inspired him to develop his theory of evolution. The iconic Panama hats, which all of us know, were originally used by the Andean region of Ecuador. Of Ecuador. By 1800s, they were manufactured and sent to US and hence became Panama hats. And as all of us know, anything that reaches US and anything that US markets uh, goes global. Uh, but actually, it was Panama hats which was developed in Ecuador. In Ecuador. Ecuador is the whole of South America uh, is, is Spanish. Uh, Spanish is the most important language that is spoken, except in Brazil. Brazil is Portuguese, a little bit of history for, for various historical reasons. And in some places, English is spoken. But the rest of it, all along the Western coast, Argentina, Chile, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, is predominantly Spanish. They do not speak a single word of English, not a single word of English. And, it, it, and this can become a big issue uh, while you're traveling there, unless you're accompanied by an English speaking guide who, who you will need even to ask simple things like spoon, fork, plate, water, I mean, they just don't know English. We had to use Google Translate many times, you know, to tell them what we wanted. So if you look at the original uh, people of uh, Ecuador, the tribal people who, who have all now become, uh, this is a tribe. These are people who, are, who belong to the Inca tribes, Inca, I-N-C-A, and many other tribes who are presumed to have lived in, in, in Ecuador uh, during BC, right from the BC, they have, they, they have been living there before the Sp uh, Spanish uh, took over and colonized and many, many years of uh, Spanish generations. So this is our guide, Francisco Enfiraz, who is a Spaniard, who is actually a descendant, uh, who, is a, uh, who is actually a Spanish descendant, but has been, has been living there uh, through generations and he just, not, he just does not know how Spain looks, okay. But they're all the, of the Spanish. And this is the, the tribe. We'll see more of them as we get. These are, we, we actually don't find them so often in the cities, but they are there in the rainforest. They are there as, as tribes in the interiors of the Amazon forest. So a little bit of food, food and culture of uh, Ecuador. Uh, it is predominantly, non-vegetarian, predominantly meat-eating country. Uh, vegetarians can have a problem. And uh, this was the first meal that we got for lunch. Some uh, steamed uh, maize and some double beans and some peanuts and some sauce and some uh, cheese, which was smelling quite horribly. Okay, so this was our meal. And uh, this, was the, this was the way we started our first day of our trip. But gradually we realized that uh, they have rice and they have curds. These are the only two things they have, rice and curds. So during our second trip when I went, I spoke to the Spanish guy. I told that guy, look here, we need curds. So whenever we went, that guy had packed about, in the, in the bus, mini bus that we hired, he had packed 10 liters of curds for us. You know, and wherever he went, he used to keep it in the fridge and serve us. We had taken our pickles and we used to ask for rice. So the vegetarians can have, can have, okay, um, um, uh, food issues if they're very particular. Why only vegetarians, even non-vegetarians can have a problem. This is some type of buns that they make like our Mangalore buns, banana buns that we see in European Mangalore, something like that. 
But even non-vegetarians can have a problem because if you look at a menu card in a typical hotel, to me it looks like a to me it looks like a zoo, you know, because uh, you know they don't use words like bacon and meat and pork. They use the name of the animals as they are. Okay, for example, if you see here, he will say roast lamb. He will say uh, cow's stomach. Uh, he will just call it as fried pig meat, okay? A cow's tongue in white sauce. I mean, even for a non-vegetarian, this can be quite unappetizing, you know? And their staple diet, their staple diet is guinea pig. Can you imagine guinea pig? They eat guinea pig, which is, uh, which is their staple diet. And in India, guinea pigs are used, world over guinea pigs are used only for experimental purposes because of their mammalian, because of their DNA, which resembles a mammalian DNA. So when you go there, you'll see things like this, you know, half Andean guinea pig, okay? And you'll have, uh, you, you know, it, to me, it looks like a mini zoo, actually, you know? uh, <clears throat> And look at this. This guinea pig is just smoked and brought onto your table. I mean, it can be, it can be quite uh, <laughs> repulsive, to, so to say, okay? Yeah. So coming from food, uh, let, let, let us understand what this equator is all about, what this equator is all about. So outside Quito, there is a, there is a tower uh, uh, that's called as a, that, that's presumably the place where the imaginary line of equator passes through. And that's a big tourist center. People go there and stand, pose for good photographs. Like this, this is a tower. This is where the equator is passing. Is an imaginary line. So people go and pose like this. For example, this is our good friend, a photographer, friend of mine. Uh, he is standing with his right foot in the north hemisphere and his south foot in the south hemisphere, southern hemisphere. You know, people pose like this. This is where the equator passes. So that is where the, the latitude is supposed to be zero. It clearly says latitude zero. That's where the equator is. Now coming to the uh, our area of our interest, which is the birding sites. Uh, typically, the birding sites of Ecuador is around the rainforest, around Quito. These are all the various places where a typical birding sites uh, are seen, where any of the, golf, uh, any of the uh, guides will take you around. There is some birding to be done around Guayaquil. Some birding people do in the South Equator. Usually they do uh, birding or bird, bird photography around South Equator and North Peru, uh, or most of it is done around Quito. So in Quito, uh, geographically or from the birds, bird, birding point of view, uh, it is divided into six zones, uh, the Choco lowlands, the Comosin lowlands, Amazonian lowlands, subtropics, temperate, and the Galapagos, where tourists visit, I mean, bird photographers and birders visit quite frequently. So now uh, birding and bird photography in, uh, in uh, Ecuador is a very well-organized industry. Um, there are good places, there are places which are very well equipped, lot of shelter, uh, because in, in, the, in, in and around the equator, there are no seasons. It can rain any time of the day, it rains 12 hours, 12 months a year, they do not have any seasons there. So uh, many times the whole day it is raining. I mean, the whole day it is raining. But yet the birding photography and the, for birders, it is so well organized that you see birding hides in, uh, in every household. And there are places where they organize a, a sheltered place where we keep our equipments and then photograph through the day. You know, it, it might be pouring outside, but your equipment and you are completely, completely safe. So this is a typical setup of a tripod with a camera and a, and a 500 mm lens. I use a 500 mm with 1.4 uh, converter, which will give me a focal length of what's about 700 mm, because that's what you need when you are clicking very, very small and tiny birds. And we need a very fast lens uh, because hummingbirds are extremely, extremely fast. So this is a typical uh, place that you can see. You see, you see all of us, our full team is here with our lenses and all that. These are small little birders where uh, birding uh, 
uh, sub, uh, what to call it, bird feeders, where these hummingbirds come. We cannot really do, unlike uh, many other places that we do in India and uh, even in Africa, uh, we cannot do wildlife uh, birding there because one is the size of the birds and secondly, the, the, the tall trees that are there, uh, which hardly prevent uh, any sunlight to come down. And uh, therefore, uh, we can't see the birds in the wild. Uh, in most places, they keep these uh, bird feeders. And so birds come somewhere there and they're moving around in the close by places, you know, for you to photograph. Many places are there. This is our team. Uh, all of us, these are all from Bangalore. This is Mr. Satyavagle. This is Dr. Methan from Sholapur, who is an orthopedic surgeon. This is our guide. This is the complete team. We have a pediatrician here. Uh, we have this Anand Muthi, who's our uh, team leader and all of that. This is how we, we, we set up the whole thing. Now, this is a very interesting concept that they have. I'm showing you this because when you go back to the images, you will see what sort of infrastructure we will need to click the images that many of us see in calendars, uh, in videos, everywhere, including some of the photographs that I have taken. Now, this system is what is called as a multi-flash system to click the, uh, to click the hummingbirds. Uh, this is a place where a lot of hummingbirds will be. They are just moving around like mosquitoes, you know, like how we see mosquitoes uh, in KGA. If you know if people who are used to seeing KGA, like how mosquitoes, you'll find them all over the place. They are very tiny birds that are moving around. So here is, a, here is what is called as a, as a multi-flash setup, uh, where for each camera, there is a flash. And there are seven or eight flashes, which are all remotely controlled uh, from the master uh, flash. And they have a complete setup. If you want me to zoom, if I zoom in, you can see. You can see if, if, if I zoom in, you'll be able to see that there's a screen that they have provided, which makes it look very natural. And then there are small birds, which are small flowers, which are hung here. So these birds keep coming there. And then that's when we photograph uh, from the master, the moment one, one camera goes, you'll see all these nine flashes going together. That's a, that's a highly complex system to get images like this. Okay. So this is, a, this is a hummingbird, which is coming to that flower. The, the background or what we call as a bokeh looks absolutely ideal. Uh, but to get images like that, we need, we need setup like that, uh, especially if you have to capture uh, the wings, you know, because the hummingbird's wings flap somewhere between 25 to 60 times a second. Okay. So at that speed, if you have to freeze an image, we need all this setup. For example, to get images like this, this is the, if, if, uh, if we go back to uh, the um, uh, video that uh, Sanjay had posted uh, as, a, as a teaser to this event, this was one of the uh, hummingbirds that was there in that. You know, to get images like this, you know, if you have to, Keep all of this. This is a wonderful uh, uh, hummingbird. This is called as a violet-tailed sylph. You know, uh, this is this is a violet-tailed sylph, and this is the abutilon flower, which is there. Uh, this image has uh, given me uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, in many of the exhibitions. I got some awards for this image actually. So uh, just to understand what this hummingbird is all about and uh, what are the other birds. Uh, Ecuador is home to about 131 species of hummingbirds and about 152 species of tanagers. Tanagers are also a small birds which are extremely, extremely colorful uh, and very, very good looking. But the iconic species, a lot of them go to Ecuador for the hummingbirds. Hummingbirds have got various species. They're called as hermits, violet ears, sunagals, thornbills, sylphs. You know, you saw that violet uh, tail swill, thornbills, pufflek, coronets. These are all different types of hummingbirds that we see. Very difficult to, very difficult to actually identify them uh, because we are just clicking images and then it requires a lot of, uh, we, we buy that guide and then we have, uh, even after clicking, it's quite a challenge to identify each uh, species. Uh, we are constantly in touch with our uh,
guide there who will identify and help us in identifying them. <clears throat> the same is not true with the managers. I mean, that is fairly easy to identify if you have the book and if you have the information. Some interesting facts about uh, hummingbirds. Hummingbirds are the smallest of the migratory birds. They migrate alone. Though they are very small, they still migrate alone up to 500 miles at a time. The name comes because of the humming noise in their wing uh, make. The wings flap anywhere between 50 to 200 beats per second. So you can imagine if, if the wings beat at that speed, what sort of uh, equipments you need at what sort of lens you need to freeze them in motion and get to look clear, actually, you know. And it's the only bird that can fly backwards. And it is probably the only bird which can stay still in the air. You know, it will flap its wing and stay still in the air. Not many birds can do that. The average weight is just about three grams. The smallest is about two inches, weighing about 1.5 grams. What is interesting is that even though the bird is very small, the brain size is, is quite big. The brain occupies almost 4% of its body weight, making it the largest in the bird kingdom. I mean, therefore, they tend to have very terrific memory. The metabolic rate, I mean, it's not metabolic race cars, it's, it's the metabolic rates can, uh, uh, it's like a metabolic race car, actually, you know, because the heart beats at 1,260 1, minutes per minute. And it, it takes breath because it's very, very active. It has to constantly keep its oxygen supply. So it, uh, it breathes 250 times per minute. Compare it with humans. We breathe at somewhere between 12 to 15 times a minute. They breathe 250 times a minute. And because of the high metabolic rate, they appear to be hungry all the time. You know, they keep coming to the feeder, taking in some sugar syrup, going back again, coming back and forth. It appears that from morning to evening, they're doing only this job and that is keeping the, the it's a glucose levels quite high. They visit thousand flowers a day. They must consume half of its weight of sugar per day because that's where they get the energy from. So what does it do at night? At night, they go into what's called as a suspended state called torpor, where the metabolic rate comes down by 1 by 15th of what it is during the daytime. It is very important to understand the colors of a hummingbird. You know, the color comes from the iridescent qualities of the feathers. And I believe they have done a lot of study on these feathers. And uh, the feathers, uh, inside the feathers, uh, there are uh, there is a water droplet or there is some liquid. So when the when the light passes through these feathers, uh, they it has a prism effect, and because of which these feathers look differently at different times to different viewers who are viewing it from different direction. You know, it depends on the angle of the light that falls on it. You will see the fantastic colors. The same image, the same bird, I click from a different angle, it looks differently. So I'll quickly run through some of these, uh, these birds. The names are quite, uh, some of them are, uh, are only for academic interest, but, uh, but uh, let us appreciate the, the, the nature of the birds and the color and uh, uh, someone like me will also appreciate a photograph also if it's good, okay. So this is called as an Andean emerald, okay. The, uh, look at the beak, the colors, these are the colors that I was talking about, okay. This is a, a Inca, brown Inca. Uh, we, are, we are shooting through the day, even if it rains, we are just able to capture some images like this. These are very small birds. I mean, I, I, would, I would repeatedly like to tell you that these are very small birds. They look big because of, because of the photograph. This is what is called as a brown violet ear. If you can see, this is the, this is the ear, there is some violet. Some, some anatomical features of it go into naming them, actually. This is a violet ear here, therefore it's a brown violet ear. This is a buff-tailed coronet. See the same buff-tailed coronet, 
you know, when you when we view it at different angle and different size, look at the way it differs. This was the image that was there in Sanjay's uh, video, uh, which is a chestnut breasted coronet. Chestnut breasted coronet. Chestnut breasted coronet. Same thing. This wonderful bird is uh, wire crested, wire crested thorn tail. You know, so look at the tail, tail which is like a thorn, and there is a there is a crest on the head, almost like a like a wire, wire crested. I must have taken at least 500 images before I got one image like this. Okay, so <laughs> because you have to get all the features, it's not very easy to get this design. I must confess that this is one of the many, many, many images that I have of this actually. <laughs> Same thing, uh, wire crested thorn tail on a flower. This is the Empress Brilliant. This is fawn breasted Brilliant again. Fawn Breasted brilliant from the other side. This is from the back and that's the front. See the water droplets because of the constant rain. Look at that. I mean, this is something absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Golden tailed sapphire. Um, the tail is golden. I mean, if you see a posterior view of this, you'll get to look at it. But this is the iridescent nature of the feathers that I was talking about. That's the one. Golden tailed sapphire. Look at the head. Look at him. It's it's it, it's it, it is it is too exciting for me to you know to I mean all of you will agree with that. This is a sword billed hummingbird. You know, look at the bill, the important feature. This bill is almost the size, is as long as the bird itself. You know, it's a sword billed hummingbird. Same thing here, sword billed hummingbird. Uh, since this is not with the multi flash and all those things, see this is the best that we can get. We can see the, the wings flapping here. But what is interesting is that we see the catch light in the eye and the whole bill is in focus. This is Gaul's jewel friend. Uh, to, to just to, to, to understand this, this is the jewel, Gaul's jewel friend. Same thing here. This is a folktale wood nymph. Folktale wood nymph. These are the, you, we should catch them, we should click, we should get an image where we are able to get these colors. It's not very often that we, we get it. I mean, that, that's, that, that, that's, the, that, that's what we have to capture. Same thing here again. Look at the beautiful color. I mean, how many colors? This may not be more than about one inch or one and or two inches, the whole bird. This is a relatively sad looking uh, hummingbird. Okay. Of course, this is one of the largest hummingbirds. It's called as a giant hummingbird. This is a green, green crowned wood nymph. Green crowned wood nymph, very tiny bird, very, very tiny bird. This is a purple, but purple bibbed, uh, white tip, purple bib, white. This is the purple bib, this is the bib, purple bib. A lot of them are tongue twisters, same thing, purple bib. This is a colored Inca, collared Inca, sorry, collared Inca. Like how if, if people who know in, in, in India, we have a, a white collared kingfisher. We just call it as collared kingfisher, though it's called as white collared kingfisher, something similar to that, collared Inca. Inca is one of the species of the hummingbirds. This is a brown Inca. Buff-tailed coronet.
say buff tailed coronet with the wings in place again brown brown violet here this is the place see these are bird feeders um many of you many of you would, would have seen it or would have heard about it so uh birding is actually a home industry there every house uh, will keep some sort of a bird feeder not all of them allow you to take images or pictures but every household would have just kept it just as a part of their culture to just feed the hummingbirds that's uh, you 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 find this very often in most households there's a small little garden they just hang this there hummingbirds are always coming there this is a black throated uh, brilliant look at that this is the iridescent see actually we do we, i i could not get it here but i i could get it in in a particular place no this is the many spotted hummingbird uh we saw this previously yeah this is this is this is this is the reason why it's called that way velvet purple coronet shining sun beam uh, actually the this is the front of it when you go see the back this is how it happens when it wings open this is the whole thing you know when the, when the sun falls on it this is the, this is the image that that we would like to click some more of the images same images and the the this is the tongue and uh, the the speed of the tongue is also is also very high uh, because it has to suck the uh, glucose water some more images of the same violet tailed swift silf hermit violet is this is the one look at this long beautiful blue tail i mean it's just amazing the idea is to always get your uh, uh, get your get your image when this is frozen and uh, and uh, that's what makes this image what it is that's the one you know this is called as this very interesting uh, hummingbird this is actually booted racket tail booted racket tail you know uh those who know about the, the, those who have done photography or bird watching in india uh there is a similar one among the drongo in india you will get racket tail drongo in india something like this some more of the same just to run them through this is interesting this is rufous tailed uh, hummingbird uh, this is actually with one single flash i mean this is more a default image where the whole thing looks like as if it's a glass made of glass uh, but it's something that happened <laughs> just like that rufous tailed because the tail this is what it is white neck jacobin white neck jacobin female so with that we complete a uh, few of the hummingbirds um, there are many more um, but just to give you an idea of uh, uh, nature's creation for hummingbirds then we go to the second set of birds which are very common in ecuador which are the tanagers the tanagers are small and medium sized birds which are also brightly colored their size is from 9 cm to about 28 cm both sexes have similar size they are found only in the western hemisphere and 60% of them live in south america out of which 30% is in the andes they usually live in pairs or small groups they are omnivorous they breed from september to november they will nest which is cup shaped in the in the trees which have a side entrance some information this is what is called as a golden tanager a golden tanager this is a black capped tanager same thing so the uh, um, 
apart from the apart from the uh, uh, feeders for hummingbirds a uh, lot of these places also have bird hides where they keep fruits they keep uh, uh, they, they keep fruits for depending upon the nature of the birds in fact i, I have to tell you how how well organized this industry is tourism is in ecuador uh, we went to a place this guy had three different places to click three different types of birds you know first he will take you to one place where all insect eating birds are there and there he will have a, a beautiful perch backdrop everything is there and at one uh, one uh, side uh, he has kept a a white sheet of cloth on which uh, there is a reflected light through the night so all the insects come and get stuck there to that screen and when the day breaks the insect eating birds come there pick up the insect from the white screen and go to a perch and sit so you will get a completely different type of birds there then he will take you to a place where fruit eating birds come tanagers so he will keep fruits like this and you can get all the fruit eating nut eating birds then you will take it to a hummingbird you know this is a this is a blue capped tanager same thing this wonderful bird is blue gray tanager that's the image uh, a dream image actually because of the you can see the rain rain drop here some whole composition is quite good. this is the image that uh, we had put it where which sanjay had put on the screen this is a honey creeper it's a actually a green honey creeper blue green honey creeper this is a blue winged mountain tanager blue winged mountain tanager male blue winged mountain tanager dusky bush tanager lemon rump tanager male lemon rump tanager oh sorry that was lemon rump tanager female this is lemon rump tanager male that was the female this is the male and i'll tell you why i why I, why we have to identify male and female it would later uh, this is a glistening green tanager looking like our almost parrot color same thing glistening green glistening green tanager female flame faced tanager flame faced tanager golden colored honey creeper look at this golden colored honey creeper same thing here very beautiful bird very very ha this is why i want to identify the male and female this is a standard ghar ghar ki kahani the male is here down almost in complete submission the female is here sitting probably shouting at the male so nature has made it this way what can be done and in all animals it is the same this is a a beautiful euphonia this is a rufous throated uh, tanager rufous throated this is rufous throated same thing rufous throated back rain in most slides you will see rain because rain is there throughout scarlet bellied mountain tanager another cute looking bird a uh, silver throated tanager moss back moss moss back golden nipped golden nipped apart from tanagers you also find uh, what are called as um, aracaris uh, these are one type of uh, birds there the other species 
apart from uh, apart from hummingbirds and tanagers we look at the other birds that we find which are also equally uh, beautiful and uh, very nice to see same thing arakari pale mandibled arakari same thing that was the back this is the front then we also get to see some uh, mammals there and in rabbit lapwing lapwing is the other bird we see a lot of lapwings in india too there are about 12 species of lapwings in india uh, this is the one that is from uh, there this is called as andean lapwing these are uh, black faced ibis this is um, a black vulture blue jays jays are a group of uh, birds which are which belong to our crow family family of crows uh, it's like our um, uh, tree pies that we see in india same thing there blue jay some other uh, uh, birds that you see this is a blue winged a brown winged parrot brown winged parrot this is called a caracula c a caracara c a r a c a r a uh, caranculated caracara it's a, some uh, one of the raptors type like vulture you know vulture eagle family uh, quite a large bird uh, looks very good in flight this is this is an agouti this is a mammal called as an agouti it's called as a brown agouti this is another word in in if if you see any pictures of ecuador and birds yeah in on facebook on uh, tourism sites everywhere this bird will always make its appearance this is called as a toucan t o u c a n this is called as choco toucan very common bird i mean very commonly used bird uh, for the bird life of ecuador same thing choco toucan t o u c a n we also get to see some uh, ant pitas you know chestnut crowned ant pitas ant pitas are small birds mostly ground uh, they actually move around in the ground they have a they have a very small tail or a feather uh, very is like pitas is like a pita we get pitas in india too in fact this is a very interesting bird Uh, in ecuador this is called as a cock of the rock uh, cock of the rock uh, uh, this is the male uh, what is interesting is that uh, the eye and the beak you just cannot make out i mean how uh, it almost looks like a like a like an english policeman's cap actually you know it's called as a cock of the rock uh, there is a particular place where these birds come early morning um, uh, and they dance and do all kind of antics to to impress the female female of the species so you see a lot of males it is very difficult to see a female there female cock of the rock two trips i have not been able to click a single female um, but we have been able to click a few of this uh, it's called as cock of the rock very interesting bird this is how the back of it looks you know the beak is somewhere here hidden in the neck somewhere here one eye and the other eye and look at it it's it's absolutely fantastic cock of the rock this is the other bird barbets lot of us would have seen barbets in india too uh, they, they, this is also a barbet this is called as a toucan barbet barbet generally are colorful birds even in india barbets are colorful birds around bangalore we get to see copper smith barbet we get to see white cheek barbet bgc kga we get to see barbets uh barbets typically have a very stout beak and very colorful and generally they are photographer friendly when they settle down somewhere they are sitting there for a fairly long time same thing toucan barbet this is also an interesting bird uh toucanet toucanet this is this is a, a crimson rumped toucanet crimson rumped 
to connect this is a this is one more green jay what we saw earlier was a blue jay all belonging to the crow family this is all in white all these are in white they don't come to the heights so much this is all in the high in the white because the birds are big so sometimes we we may be able to get some images like this again see the rain beautiful bird very very good red headed babbit so the image used this is also a red headed babbit female this is the male that's a female appreciate the rain again always raining one more pitta this is called as yellow breasted pitta observe the lack of feathers here or a tail what we call this is one more bird called flower flower piercer masked flower piercer masked flower piercer one more token this is called as plate build plate it looks like a plate here plate build mountain token this 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 particular bird is same thing here plate build mountain token woodpeckers black checked woodpeckers now this is a very in interesting bird this bird is actually called as an umbrella bird typical only of ecuador usually it is there in the thick forest it does not come very near near this one and uh, one has to be lucky to get this is the, the this is the display that it does where that that it's this one it, it it opens up to attract the female one has to get this image uh, to actually know that it's to that that's the beauty of that it's called as an umbrella bird i mean any of you can google umbrella bird you will see this same thing here umbrella bird very difficult to photograph for the very difficult to spot because it's the thick and uh, for some of these birds we have to really get into the rain forest and we should understand that rain forest uh, one first and foremost there is no light uh, secondly the the floor is moist the floor is slippery the floor is slushy and uh, it's quite a challenge to to get some of these birds but one has to be quite mad or passionate to go through all that to get one image like this next we move to amazon from the from the quito region we meet the we, we move to the amazon belt of uh, of uh, ecuador as all of you know Amazon is uh, is one of the largest uh, forests in the world. Uh, very thickly, um, uh, very thick forest. Lot of water bodies, rivers, etc. So we need to really, really get into the forest in in boats like this and click on the boat. This is actually called as a very interesting phenomena. This is uh, these are called as grey-headed parakeets. They come to this clay. Uh, this is called as clay lick. Uh, at a particular time of the day they come in hordes to a particular place where this is all in nature i mean they, they, there's no hide there it's all in nature uh, uh, the the scientific reason is that uh, they normally feed on some plums uh, in the forest uh, which can be poisonous uh, to their uh, to their body so to counter the effect of those uh, the, those chemicals these uh, parrots uh, come and uh, lick the clay to counter them so this is called as this is a clay lick of the gray headed parakeets parakeets uh, in the amazon this is one of them a uh, gray headed parakeet on a perch this is a blue headed parakeet again at a clay lick you know they they lick this this is, this is the blue headed parakeet india india also is home to several parakeets uh, just for information uh, Uh, there are, there's only one, all the what we call what we see on our rooftops what we see everywhere are parakeets there is only one parrot in in india which is the vernal hanging parrot rest of it is all the long tailed ones are all parakeets so this is also a parakeet in ecuador of course 
This is also a blue-headed uh, uh, parrot. Uh, this is a parrot. I mean, they, 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 it's not a parakeet. There, it's a parrot. Blue-headed parrot. This is a southern mealy Amazon parrot. These are some birds called as Annie, A N I. These are all in the wild. In the wild, we also get to see. We go to Amazon mainly for this bird. This is a, a blue and yellow macaw. Uh, in the wild, I mean, all of us would have seen this in exhibitions, in circus, and things like that. But this is in the wild. I mean, you see them in the wild. You know. <clears throat> This is a scaly naped uh, uh, Amazon parrot, again, which has come for that. Uh, this actually came to a place where there was water, okay, not, not so much of a clay lick. In the Amazon, we got to see some of these hawks. This is called as a common night hawk. When you go, when we, uh, most of the birding in uh, Amazon is done now. Uh, uh, is done in a boat, a boat, uh, uh, not a not a very great boat. It's more like a canoe. So we do that uh, there. Uh, and as the as the day comes to a close, uh, you can spot something like this. This is a this is a caiman, a type of a uh, reptile, something resembling a crocodile or an alligator, something like that. So we just got to see it as close as this, that I could just get the I could just get the pupil of the crocodile of the kind. This is a very interesting bird called as Hoatzin, uh, spelt as H-O-A-T-Z-I-N. Uh, this bird is, um, uh, is very important from the evolutionary point of view. During its uh, formation, during its, uh, this is an adult one. When this bird is a juvenile, uh, if you remember the evolution of a bird, Birds came um, uh, after reptiles. So you, you will actually see claws on the wings when they are very young. When they become adult, they, the claws go away. Therefore, these are actually called as a historic bird. They, the word used for them is historic hoatzin. Same thing here. Of course, we didn't get to see them with the claws. Uh, this is one of the kingfishers that we got. This is called as an Amazon Kingfisher. Uh, I'm sure all of you know that uh, kingfisher also, kingfishers are also found in India. 12 species of uh, kingfishers in India. Uh, I think that's where uh, the kingfisher calendar came from. Uh, there are 12 species in India, but this is a Amazon kingfisher. Same thing here. Then we go to um, uh, uh, the Amazon forest. Um, we had a very interesting. Uh, experience in the in the Amazon uh, forest uh, because we wanted to uh, uh, we wanted to uh, I, would, I will I will play a, I will play a, 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 a this one here. See this, uh, am I audible? Yes, doctor. Am I audible? Yes, yes, doctor. Yeah. You're audible. Okay. Okay. This is a very interesting uh, video. We had to click the uh, cock of the rock across a mountain. So we were staying in at one time, this one, and this uh, damn bird was there at in some other mountain. So we had to cross the valley of the Amazon on a contraption which was so uh, rustic. It was a box made out of a fabricated box. And then it was operated by this guy on a motorcycle at one end. You can see it at the right end of the screen, um, uh, at the right end of the screen. So we had to cross almost about uh, half a kilometer across the Amazon forest uh, to go to the other side of the mountain. And uh, you'll see the type of vision that we could get of the Amazon forest. Uh, Amazon forest trees only are about 200, 300 feet, and we are almost at about 1,000 feet, I think, to, to, to cross the uh, mountain range from one mountain to the other mountain. Uh, it was a fantastic experience, so I will take you through an aerial view of the Amazon forest.
uh, doctor, are you playing the video? Doctor, are you playing the video? Sorry? Are you playing the video? Yeah, I'm playing the video. Uh, no. Can can everyone see? No, no, we can't. It's, it's not it's not moving. You can't see? Yeah, it's not moving. It's just the same screen which says uh, save Amazon rainforest. Oh, okay. You might have to share that window. Huh? You'll have to share the video window. Uh, that video. Okay, we'll come back to that later on. Okay. Let me let me let me let me go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when we when we cross that um, that mountain, uh, we were able to see this uh, bird. Uh, this is again a cock of the rock, the Amazon cock of the rock. Uh, you look, you if, you if you remember what we saw in Quito, uh, in that part, uh, the the bird is more reddish, whereas here it is more orangish, and you can you can see the in this you can see the beak somewhere here the beak is actually you know. Uh, doctor, uh, we are not able to see the photo of the bird. Why? Uh, could uh, you share again? Share your screen again. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the Amazon. This is the Amazonian cock of the rock, which is a little bit different from what we saw earlier. Am I audible? And is the slide seen? Yes. Yes, doctor. Okay. Same thing again. Andean cock of the rock. This is the. These are the tribal women I was talking to you uh, when I started. Uh, these are the original inhabitants of, of Ecuador who are now reduced to just staying in, in the mountains uh, as tribes. We had an opportunity to actually, uh, they were the ones who took us to shoot one eagle called as Harpy Eagle. So this, they, we had to take their help we had to walk almost five kilometers in the rainforest, crossing uh, uh, rivulets, um, small rivers, slush, wearing those gum boots up to knee height, just to get one image of this. Then we come to one more, uh, some more uh, birds in the Amazon region. Okay, uh, this is the Arakari that we saw there is different. This is different. This is uh, many banded Arakari, one, two, three, four bands. This is a heron. This is a snail kite. Uh, this is a kite. Actually, it, it only eats snails. It pick up, picks up the snails from the water bodies and it only feeds on snails. That's why it's called a snail kite. This is a, a, a rufescent tiger heron. A hawk. Now, these are some uh, other mammals that you'll get to see. This is called as a howler monkey, you know, a huge, huge play, huge one. Uh, there you can see them on the, on the trees, all Amazon. All this is Amazon. And this is why they're called as a howler monkey. They came to a water body. It was the same water body where we got those, saw those parrots. This is an interesting image caught default, there is this howler monkey and there is one tortoise here in the water. It seems to be speaking to that. Then there are these squirrel monkeys. Look at them, so cute there actually. Very small. Uh, Ecuador is also home to a lot of volcanoes. So this is one of the live volcano, volcano live that uh, we could, we could uh, spot when we were driving. Because of volcanoes, uh, uh, there are some places where you find uh, thermal springs. In fact, this is one place called uh, Thermos de Papilacta. We spent one night here. When you walk on the, uh, in the hotel room floor, when you walk, you can actually feel the temperature below. I mean, the, the floor is warm because of the hot springs that are there. This is just, uh, they in fact mix uh, the cold water and hot water from thermal springs and let it out into their uh, landscape. 
people can just come and spend some time there uh, you know uh, because of the low low temperatures but thermal springs then we come to the last uh, portion which is uh, which is galapagos uh, very interesting uh, galapagos is an archipelago of about 18 volcanic islands distributed on either side of equator in the pacific ocean 100 kilometers west of uh, main ecuador they are known for large number of species which charles darwin studied before he postulated the theory of evolution the thing here is that the spaniards first discovered this in 15 1535 and for a long time the english used pirates were using it there was no human habitation for many 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 years since there were no human habitation the animal life there did not know what is meant by predator so the 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 only animals which could which could live in the saline waters uh, got on to the island and they made the island their home and they just moved around there till man till man again i want to use the word till man went there and started doing what he did to the rest of the world which is to destroy the animal life till then the birds just lived there therefore you can see fantastic animals of a completely different kind um you know who who just who were there in the in the in the in the saline waters who just crossed across onto the island so this is the uh, image of the of the of the galapagos islands many islands so how does one visit there is a, there are flights that get into galapagos islands uh, they have restricted the even now they want to maintain the the ecological balance therefore they don't allow many tourists they have, they have regulated the number of tourists who can get on to the flight uh, they regulate everything is under regulation a uh, little bit of tourism is there and you can go to a couple of islands only the other islands you have to just cover through some steamer or something like that a man cannot step in because of his nature okay so uh, so these are the, the only about two or three islands are inhabited but you can visit the other by a steamer and then walk around take images study and come back so we stayed in a place called galapagos greens we just had to take a steamer and go around we had some people there to help us so you can see things like this very often there huge cactus the birds that are seen there are completely different these are boobies uh, this is called as a blue footed booby blue footed booby the color of the the color of the of its of the legs is because of its diet Uh, the carotenoids in the diet that it has the crabs and all those things that they eat they all get settled down to give this this color blue footed blue footed booby again then you see huge tortoises huge six footers you know they'll be just walking on the road i mean walking on the paths like this you know and they have been there for hundreds and millions of years till man went there and a lot of these pirates when they went there english pirates they started the hunting them they started using them for their food and things like that so the numbers have come down like like anywhere else but still you can you can see them uh, moving like this this is almost about 4 feet high i mean i had to lie down on the ground to get an image like this but still this is what it is 4 to 5 feet tortoise then there is a coot where you find coots in here also they are building some nests here is collecting some material to build some nest then this is a brown noddy this is a brown pelican again brown pelican this is a, a flamingo the orange neck and the foot here also is because of their diet they eat crustaceans i'll show you the crustaceans that they eat and because of which they 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 develop this this color you see flamingos you can see some penguins also Gal uh, the um, galapagos is the only other place that you can see penguins apart from antarctica though the the their structure is different 
uh, but they are the only place where, apart from Antarctica, where you can see penguins. This is a great blue heron, ground finch. These are the birds on which I believe uh, uh, Charles Darwin did a lot of his uh, studies uh, to study the theory of evolution. These are the yellow wabbler, wabblers. This is a Nazca, Nazca booby. Peruvian pelican. Yeah. You know, you, you don't see this. This is called as a iguana. This is a, this is a marine iguana. Uh, it looks almost like our uh, crocodile, it's like a reptile, uh, but uh, evolutionarily they're, they're a little bit different. This is a marine iguana. Look at them, how they look. They almost look like, like a mini dinosaurs. They're very small. They, they may not be more than about three or four feet. I mean, almost much smaller than that, two feet. You find them in clumps all over Galapagos on the rocks, you'll find them. You will not find them anywhere else in the world. This is quite a close up. This is a land iguana. What we saw earlier was a, was a marine iguana. This is a, a land iguana. Actually, the, the, over, the, over the period of, uh, as a part of evolution, uh, these birds do not know what is, uh, what is meant by a predator. You know, that's why they are on the ground. The tortoises are moving on the ground, birds are on the ground, everything is on the ground. You can walk as close as this and take an image they will just not fly away. They will just not fly away. They lay their eggs on the ground. They just do this marking, uh, some marking they have, and uh, then they, they lay their eggs on the ground and just incubate them on the ground. Because they don't know what is a predator. I mean, just before the event started, we were discussing with the leopards of Sri Lanka, uh, something like that. Uh, you know, uh, leopards of Sri Lanka are different from leopards in India and even in the Africa. Like that, I mean, you, you can just go there and you see the maternal instinct because of the direction of the, of the sun, the, the booby, it will keep on changing its direction to provide shade to the eggs, you know. Uh, that, is the, that is the beauty that one has to observe here, actually. Look at that. And the chicks, they're just on the ground. I mean, uh, they just don't know danger. They don't know danger. Chicks are growing there. They are just the nests are just just about there in small shrubs and bushes. This is a very interesting bird. This is called as a frigate bird. Uh, uh, they have this uh, uh, gallows, gallows, you know, uh, which actually uh, red in color. Uh, this is a male, and it is it, it's a fantastic sight to see how they attract the female by blowing this up, you know. So they blow this up and fly over, over around females and hover around the nest just to attract the, the females, female frigid birds. Look at that. No, this is just to attract the female frigid birds. Then of course one gets to see sea lions plenty. It's a photographer's dream to get an image like this, you know, when the waves are there and the water bubbles all over the place. Maternal instinct of a mom, mom and a kid. Yeah, these are uh, called as uh, sally crabs. You'll see them on, on, along the shores of Galapagos. These are the crustaceans that these birds, these flamingos eat. And the carotenoids that you see here are the ones that will settle down in the in the in the neck and in the foot of those flamingos, I'm sure the uh, blue-footed booby also will have something like this. These are crabs, which you see them on the rocks. This is also one uh, light-footed crab. So, friends, uh, uh, here we come to the end of uh, of, uh, of my description and my travel to Ecuador. Uh, interesting place to go to, lot to learn. Uh, feel like going back again and again. Uh, my, talk, my talk is over. Thank you very much for a very, very patient listening.
uh, and I'm quite happy to be with all of you. I'm now open to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Um, I request uh, our members to uh, ask, raise their hand and please stick to only one question per head uh, when you are asked to unmute. Uh, there are two questions in the chat box. Uh, the first one is, uh, what's the lifespan of a hummingbird? And uh, the other one, yeah, that you could take that uh, question. So actually, yeah, uh, I must confess that uh, I'm, my, my answer may not be very accurate. Um, but I, I, I have no idea of this. We can, I'll, I'll have to mark. Okay. I cannot give an answer, actually. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, if I uh, if I was if probably if I was a, if I belong to a birders group or a bird watching group, okay, I may have had this information. I am only looking at the birds as a photographer, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think uh, I think uh, this question has given us an opportunity to look up for the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, please. Uh, uh, thanks yeah, for asking, uh, Pratap. Yeah. And the next question is, what's the difference between uh, Arakari and the Taukan? Any idea? Uh, yeah, yeah. They are all different birds completely. Um, uh, if you see the morphology itself, it is completely different. Okay. Uh, they all uh, are, are different birds. I mean, there, there's no relationship at all to speak about it. The morphology is different. Everything is different. They don't belong to the same family at all. Thank you. Anybody? Yes. Nitin, please ask your question. Nitin, you have to. Nitin, you have you, you have to you have to unmute. Yeah, one second. Yeah, no, I was not able to because I didn't have yeah. the yeah, yeah. lights. Uh, great presentation, uh, uh, Pradeep sir. I mean, very fascinating. Now it has interested me to visit Ecuador. Uh, <laughs> very nice uh, photographs. So I just wanted to uh, pick on the last topic that you just talked about, right? I mean, you don't see any uh, predators there. No, everything is on the ground. It's very, you know, uh, they are very friendly, right? But uh, interesting to know that uh, what about the snakes? I mean, we know that the Amazon forest and all this are heavily yeah. invested, infested with the snakes. Yes, yes, yes. So um, they don't get scared with that? I mean, is the... No, I mean, no. They... Yeah, Nitin, the, the, the predator portion was for Galapagos Islands. Okay, okay, there. Mm -hmm. okay. Galapagos, because Galapagos Islands, there was no uh, man. Man, I, I always want to use the word man. Man did not go there okay, for a long time. Okay, uh, till the English pirates went there somewhere in the 15th, 16th century. Okay, uh, it is the, the law, the, in the theory of evolution uh, to grow in, to grow and survive in a predator free environment, we are talking about Galapagos Islands. Okay, the snakes that you are talking is in the Amazon. Okay, okay. In, the, in the Amazon, of course, there are snakes, um, but I'm not a, I'm not a reptile photographer. So obviously there are a lot of snakes. Uh, obviously uh, we, we did get to click one or two. Uh, obviously the, the, those who want to do reptile photography, those who want to do snake photography, they obviously have to go to different time of the year and different type of places to probably do snake photography. You know, snake and reptile photography itself is a specialty. For example, if you go here in uh, uh, Western Ghats, uh, frogs and snakes are done in the uh, Amboli uh, region. So obviously, I think uh, I have not done reptile for actually. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Uh, I request uh, Shashikant, Rotarian Shashikant Pobati to unmute. And just before that, there is an interesting fact uh, uh, that is shared by one of our uh, friends from Jamaica, Tricia. Uh, it says that the hummingbird, uh, also called the doctor bird, is the national bird of Jamaica. Oh, okay. okay. So today we have a doctor uh, talking about the doctor bird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks uh, for that information, uh, Trisha. Yes, uh, Shashi Khan, sir, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening. My goodness, uh, Pradeep, sir, it was amazing. I was riveted to the screen. I just wanted to know, sir, basically, you have kindled the interest uh, in all of us. We city slickers, we don't know anything about all these uh, birds and other things. I have a personal question. I mean, uh, concerned only with this uh, particular topic. What really made you go to Galapagos Highlands and uh, you know take out all these photographs? I mean, I am really wondering. I want to 
know how the, the, this passion drive you or how did you go about doing all these things okay. could you kindly you know say to our curiosity about this place see i i took to bird photography um uh, I, i i always wanted to do bird photography because when it, when i was a medical student and much earlier than that i used to see a lot of excellent photographs by well known photographer e, e hanmant rao and you know many people here will know e hanmant rao you know they used to click lot of photographs somehow when i started photography i always wanted to do bird photography i don't know why but i wanted to do because i thought i because i was because i like traveling i thought if you take bird photography you can travel the world because birds are there everywhere in the world birds are there everywhere in india <laughs> okay so um, uh, when i started um, bird photography uh, uh, i thought uh, i used to do a lot of uh, reading and i i i joined a group uh, through facebook i met lot of friends uh, who had visited uh, uh, ecuador and uh, who had visited galapagos islands so when you are moving in a in a in a in a peer group like how kids have peer pressure you also have peer pressure okay and uh, only thing is you have to have deep pockets to have peer pressure okay but uh, but you see so some of things fell in place and i also knew that if you go to ecuador i had read one of my good friends called uh, dr ajit huilgold Uh, who is a, a renal transplant surgeon and a good wildlife photographer he had gone to galapagos so i had just spoken to him and then i also started reading and then uh, myself and my wife both of us she also likes nature and wildlife so both of us when we went to ecuador we did a short trip to galapagos actually um, the the trip to galapagos itself is about 7 days uh, but we could not do 7 days we could do only about 3 or 4 days so we just added the galapagos to ecuador so first time when we went i did uh, ecuador with the galapagos second time when we went we did the ecuador including the amazon forest so we were able to do it i am now looking at going to ecuador third time to do south ecuador and north peru you know so that is the that is the plan let us see <laughs> thank you doctor really very nice of you to take that question thank you so much no problem thank you doctor uh, doctor for your information uh, late uh, e, e hanuman rao's daughter is in our uh, fellowship group as a member oh, okay okay her name is anita nobel i think she has not joined today yeah, okay she is uh, she is a part of our group oh okay okay, okay. Yeah. Nice, monica nice. please monica patil totarian monica patil yeah please go ahead unmute unmute uh, monica you have to unmute am i audible yeah okay uh good evening and thank you for this fantastic presentation doctor thank uh you. welcome thank i you. have uh, yeah i have my question in two parts or the two questions firstly when you say in the galapagos there are no predators and hence they don't know who, who enemies or predators are uh is it that the survival rate is 100% there for all the birds and uh, no there and, is no Ah, okay. Yeah, and my second question is, uh, who and how was this trip planned? Because it seems to be a very interesting uh, circuit of the uh, of trip. Okay. So first question. Now, when I say there are no predators, uh, specifically, I wanted to uh, stress on the point that in our theory, in in our evolution, okay, all of us, all all of us evolved. by knowing dangers you know for, for for any evolution for that matter okay because there are no there were no because i think there in in galapagos uh, animals don't eat animals they survive on crabs that this and all that so they never since, since man was not the the biggest predator for animal kingdom is man okay so since man was not there they lived there for centuries and centuries and centuries you know just cohabitation only when the english pirates went there they did not find food because there was no agriculture okay so they started shooting the tortoise started eating tortoise meat they started eating iguanas they started eating birds for their own survival when pirates went there that is exactly even now why they have controlled this 
they do not nothing from the land is from the outside land is taken into Quito, is taken into Galapagos. Okay, so there was no, for example, for example, you you would not see a cow, you won't see sheep, you won't mm -hmm. see you won't see all these things because these are all man-made domestic animals. Okay, so all these animals are not there. Even now they are not there. Even now they are not there. Okay, so that is what is the theory of evolution is what I'm thinking. And as far as death is concerned, as far as the life is concerned, I think every animal comes with, with, with its own life cycle and uh, lifespan and, and things like that. But in an animal kingdom, there is no hunting that happens. That's what I wanted to say when there are no predators, you know. So uh, they, if, if I'm not mistaken, they will allow only about 100 to 150 uh, tourists from the mainland to get into Galapagos at any given point of time and then get back with a lot of restrictions. You can't carry, you can't carry your luggage, much of luggage. You have to go with only few luggage, which is screened thoroughly for any weapon, for any, you know, uh, harmful instruments and things like that. Uh, the, Ecuador, the Ecuador government has retained it as, as a heritage site. That's why, that is why it is UNESCO's number one heritage site. Mm -hmm. Galapagos Islands. It is UNESCO's number one heritage site. So for that, a lot of effort has been put by the Ecuador government, actually. And I must say, though they have complaints, I must say, as a visitor, I thought it was a great visit. Yeah. Your so second question you about who organized it? Yeah. <laughs> this, this trip, I organized it myself. Okay. Oh, I organized okay. it. Uh, I, uh, I met this... Uh, see, I met this uh, guide... Uh, um, uh, uh, through Facebook, and then I befriended him, and then I was impressed because he could speak English because that was most important for me. Okay, so first time my wife and I went, second time I took my photographer friends, the team that you saw. Okay, was my photographer friends. Uh, we went back to the same guide, and now he has become our contact point because now okay. we are we are sending our friends and etc. 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 who are interested in doing it. But he is our point of contact. He can speak English and Spanish. Okay. okay. So, so one knows now how to plan it, who to go. Oh, to. no problem at all. Any time, <laughs> any time, any time for wildlife, any time for photography. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, doctor. I think I'll request you to take lead and, uh, uh, you know, sure, sure, uh, sure. Uh, uh, no plan a trip no for our uh, wildlife okay. birds. Sure, uh, sure. Maybe sure. we can plan well in advance and make a trip. Yes, sure. uh, Rahul, uh, Rotarian Rahul. Uh, Rahul is from a very beautiful birding place of Karnataka, Dandeli. Oh, okay. <laughs> black cap, black cap monarch. Okay. Yes, I have cited <laughs> it recently, Dr. <laughs> I have black seen him nesting as well. Yes, Rahul. Uh, first of all, I would like to black thank you. Yeah. A black cap monarch. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, sir. You know, I should uh, appreciate uh, your passion, your commitment, and dedication. Okay, because I know that uh, even I'm a birder, and it really needs a lot of patience. And your session was really crystal clear, and it was, you know, it will definitely put a lot of people, you know, for birding things now. Okay, and also for the conservation of it. So I have uh, uh, one question. Uh, is like, you know, what is the conservation? Uh, uh, steps they have taken. What are the efforts, conservation efforts in that place to protect the birds and other wildlife things? Uh, and the second thing is like uh, we do have a hummingbird moth in uh, India. Uh, so, and which is the camera and the uh, lens you use? Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, see, conservation efforts. Um, again, as as I I started with a disclaimer to say I am not a conservationist. Okay. And, uh, but one thing I must tell you, all over Ecuador, uh, every single person, uh, every single person whom we met are very passionate. And th that's why I said that every household will have a feeder there. You know, every household, like how we put our, uh, uh, you know, during Christmas and all that, how we have these lampshades outside the house, you know, uh, decorating our houses. Every household will have, a, will have these uh, feeders. They are all uh, doing it. I'm sure Ecuador, the Ecuador government has taken up steps uh, with severe punishment. More than punishment, I know. I think uh, tourism being a very important point, 
uh, important source of income for Ecuador. A lot of the citizens themselves are quite uh, conscious about it and they protect it because they know that their livelihood depends on that. Uh, this is what I'm thinking, though I may not have the rules and regulations uh, on hand, but this is what I'm, I could see the passion. I could see the passion. Uh, I, can, I can only say this much as far as conservation is concerned. Camera, uh, yes, one needs a good camera, uh, preferably what we call as a full uh, um, uh, either crop sensor or a, or a big sensor. I use a Canon 5D Mark IV and lens has to be minimum 500 mm. 400 mm also is manageable, 400 to 500. I use a 500 mm with a TC. I see Chidanand here somewhere. He has been a, my burning friend. Both of us also have gone to Andamans together. So uh, we have, all of us use 500 minimum, minimum 500 F4 uh, because you need the speed and sometimes the light is very poor. Therefore, you need a big focal, I mean, you need four or 2.8 or something like that. Uh, a tripod is a 100, 100% must. Uh, these are some of the things that a photographer will know when he's going to click images like this. I mean, is it okay, Rahul? Did I answer all your questions? Yes, def yes, yes definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I would like to thank you once again for this information. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much, sir. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you, doctor. Uh, doctor, we have a uh, Rotarian Sundar Prakash. Uh, Sundar, please uh, go ahead and ask. Uh, thanks, Sanjay. Uh, Dr. Rao, it's an excellent, amazing presentation, lovely birds, all that. Okay, my, simple, my question is, how do I reach Ecuador? Through US or through Europe or which other country? Because India is far away. Could need a couple of connecting flights. Yeah. And all the way going there, do you also cover Ivory Coast or any other countries? Costa Rica? Ha, okay. Now, uh, it all depends upon uh, how many days you would like to spend and what are the regions you would like to cover. First question, uh, you can go to Ecuador directly from uh, Europe. Uh, either you go to Spain and Spain has some flights which goes directly to Quito. But what we did was both the times we went to US, go to Atlanta. From Atlanta, there are flights that will take you to Quito. Uh, Ecuador is about um, 11 hours or 10 and a half hours behind us. It's a long flight. It's a long flight. I mean, uh, Bangalore to US itself is a long flight. And then again, another five or six hours from there. Uh, you go either through US or through Europe. Europe generally is Spain. Uh, I think even there are flights which connect from Amsterdam. From Amsterdam also, there are flights that go. Uh, we went through Europe, or we went through US both the times. That is about reaching uh, Quito. Uh, your second uh, question was? Um, Do you cover also Costa Rica? Ah, Costa Rica, yeah. Now, this way, for example, um, uh, uh, it all depends upon the number of uh, days that, are, that one has at his uh, disposal. Uh, both the times we did only Ecuador because Ecuador itself, to do justice to Ecuador will take you a minimum of 15 days. Even if you don't go to Galapagos, it takes 15 days. If you, because apart from the mainland that is Quito and surrounding Quito, we did seven days around Quito and seven days Amazon. Second time, seven days main Quito and about five days Galapagos first time. So that is one. A lot of people, you, one can go to uh, uh, Costa Rica from there. Uh, flight between Ecuador and Costa Rica is about another four hours. People can do it. In fact, I have a, I have a, <laughs> we have a group that is that is going. We are going to, we are going to uh, Costa Rica somewhere uh, uh, next May if everything is all right. We are going, we are going to Costa Rica itself for 21 days, and a part of our group from there is going to Ecuador from Costa Rica, and they are spending another three weeks there. So it all depends upon the number of times, but. Uh, if one has gone up to Costa Rica, uh, one, uh, if one has gone up to Ecuador, one can cover Costa Rica too. Thank you, Doctor. Sundar, I just wanted to also inform everyone that traveling to Ecuador is much easier, especially as, as far as visa issues are concerned, because you get 90 days visa on arrival. Exactly. 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 Oh, thanks, Gita. On, that was on arrival. Question. On arrival, is it? On arrival, yeah. Oh, that's On good. arrival. On arrival. 
and especially if you have a American visa, there is no problem at all. Okay. Doctor, what right. about food? how did you manage food? Yeah, no, Ramkrishna Mudgal or in here though. Okay. Yeah. That is the only place where you can go on a holiday and come back losing weight. Actually, okay. <laughs> okay. So he can manage Madhavi. You see, the point is uh, vegetarian salwa. So rice you get there, you get rice everywhere. Beans. Uh, vegetables are available. Uh, okay. uh, and uh, but I must tell you that slowly the people can understand what vegetarianism means. Okay. Um, like Europe, even Ecuador. Because they are taking a lot of tourism tourists uh, in the hotels that you stay. Uh, they, we managed. Hell in the lab. We, for first time we had a little bit of an issue, but rice is available. Uh, curds is available. A uh, lot of maize, cheese, all these things are available. Uh, and like any other Indian who goes abroad, we always carry something in our bags. Okay. So, which is typical. Some MTR mixes, that, this and all that. So, uh, with rice, we mix all of that. And um, actually, we were the second time when we went, we were staying in a place for a window. We stayed for about five days. I actually got into the kitchen and uh, that guy uh, had, so was serving some mashed potato. And because I saw him making some pizza, something like that, I taught him how to use pizza uh, dough and use the mashed potato and some onions. And I taught him how to make uh, aloo parathas there, in fact. Okay, so uh, um, I taught him that uh, for two days that we were there. And by the time we came back, that guy already converted an aloo paratha into meat and put, started putting minced meat into that. And he started making uh, minced meat parathas in that. He learned the trick. Okay, <laughs> okay. so we managed somehow like this only. Okay, but uh, as I always say, as I always, always say, uh, with so much of travel that we have done, if one is very, very, very uh, finical about uh, food, uh, traveling can become a little bit challenging. One has to somehow manage uh, because our purpose is not food there. Our purpose is something else, actually, you know. So we should be able to manage. Rice is available. Curds is available. Okay. So we can manage. We can manage. Just one, just one more. Step. Is that an expensive country or is it uh, comfortable? Sorry? Ah, no, it, is, it, is, it, 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 it is fairly affordable, fairly yeah. affordable. But you know what has happened from the, from the because they are, they are used to a lot of international tourism. Uh, for example, uh, I was just uh, during the, during the tra trial run, I was telling Sanjay, uh, I, was, uh, I was telling Sanjay that, um, you know, a typical uh, 21 days or, or 15 days trip, 15 days, let me say 15 days, will cost about uh, three and a half thousand dollars, all inclusive. Okay, airport to airport, three and a half to four thousand dollars, airport to airport. Uh, yeah, usually they give all inclusive. Uh, this is what it costs. This is apart from the airfare, of course. Airfare is, airfare is another one and a half lakh something. But about three and a half dollars should be, three and a half thousand dollars is approximate budget which one should keep uh, for a 15 days to about 20 days trip. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. I think uh, we, if we travel with doctor, I don't, I don't think we have to worry about food also. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, doctor. Any, anyone else has any questions? I also see Soundarya Valli here, who is the WWF head of uh, state of Karnataka. Valli, would you like to ask something? Nothing to ask, Sanjay. It's very, very interesting and uh, truly admire the, the, in fact, the humbleness and uh, the way he's explained everything. Uh, he has actually inspired many of us to go. I'm not a Rotarian though, but uh, please add me when you go in your group. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. You're always so welcome. You, I'm, yeah. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you're heading WWF, you should enjoy it, actually. Of course, right, yes, we love taking, it. You should be taking us there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We will definitely. Yes. Why not? Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so actually. much. Thank, Thank you, you, doctor. Anyone else has any questions? So, shall we close the session? Uh, by Thank the you. way. Thank uh, you, Sanjay. I, Thank must, you. I, I must thank each one of you for having sat through a fairly long session. 
as i was telling sanjay one thing that rotary teaches especially if you become a president of one club like rotary club of bangalore worst is if you are a pdg you go on talking and you are used to long talks actually you know okay <laughs> thank you very much i'm i'm quite happy that all of you enjoyed it uh, i must thank you thank each one of you for having sat through a long talk thank you very much sanjay thank, thank you, you gitanjali thank you rashmi thank you all of you thank oh, you very much